Hi guys, it's Ken here from OK Portugal and today we have a property video for you. Now I'm stood outside this beautiful two bedroom farmhouse that has an annex upstairs and a further one room that can be used as a bedroom as well. So it's a two to three bedroom house with a further room upstairs. It also has a beautiful swimming pool, a swimming pool house. It's got another barn that's been converted into two bedrooms with two bathrooms and an extensive pine forest that also has beautiful cork oaks, a huge vineyard, uh, that has apparently made about 350 litres of wine and uh, it just goes off into different terraces where there's vegetable gardens, there's a bottom terrace that has wells and water storage tanks, a little stream running along the property. So yeah, an absolutely fantastic one. So why don't you come along with me and have a look. So this is the car parking area. As you can see, we've comfortably fitted two cars here. Um, and the main entrance into the property is through here. There is a further road that goes all the way down here to the second house or barn. Uh, but to start with, we're going to go directly into the house and uh, we're going to show you inside. Right, so as you can see, it's all gated off and uh, all secure. Now the front of the house here, you can see there's double glazing uh, there's also fly screens on the windows and uh, it's the same for all of the windows on this main building over here. So let's go through the front door and there's an enclosed porch area and as you can see there's some seating over here. Uh, there's also the main windows of the house which again are double glazed. This is the main sort of entrance to the house and this enclosed area stretches around. So let's go into the main house now and have a look. So we start off inside the kitchen area and it's a very nice kitchen. It's a solid wood, solid wood kitchen units. Um, we've got granite tops. There is a, a dishwasher, a cooker, a gas hob, microwave, everything that you would imagine in a, in a, in a really good kitchen. We also have the sort of kitchen island in the middle that has storage and some beautiful Moroccan styled lights. Now this is an open fireplace, so there isn't a wood burner in this one, but as you can see it gets lots of use. And I can imagine you could probably cook some things in there. And that's all vented through this chimney out to the back. Uh, there's some lovely stone details on these walls, look at this. Now one of the things that you may notice is, it's a little bit dark in here, and that's because in Portugal during the summer it gets so incredibly hot 
that you don't really want tons of sunlight coming inside. Now today is 30 degrees, so having your house like this will keep it much cooler on the inside. So this is the lounge area, and as you can see there's a wood burner. Now this wood burner is also plugged, well it's got an electric fan, so it'll take all of the heat from the burning wood and it'll blow it around in this lounge here and make it really nice and toasty in the winter. And that's been chimneyed out through the back of the wall. And this one has a little oven inside so you can actually cook stuff while you're making a fire. So very nice. I must get myself one of these. Now this is quite a generous sized room. As you can see there's some large sofas that are spread out through the room and you can see that there's quite a lot of space. We've got two windows, uh, two big windows. They are double glazed. They slide and open up and they also have shutters. Then there's a, a door between the lounge kitchen area and the sleeping areas. So let's go this way first and we have one of the two bedrooms. And this is a super king bed. So you can see there's quite a lot of space in here. Now the owners did want me to point out that at the moment they're busy packing and they're preparing to move. And so there are lots of boxes and things around. But as you can see here, there's a lovely window that brings in lots of light and looks out over the beautiful gardens. Um, and there's lots of room in here. As soon as you put a super king bed, inside a room, you know it's got to be a big room. <laughs> so it's a, you know, it's a really good size. Okay, so now we're going to go on to the next room here, which is, I would say, looks about the same size. Uh, this one has a smaller bed. I think this is just a king size. And very high ceilings. Um, very high. I mean, I can't put my hands anywhere near them. And again, this one's got Beautiful windows that look out over a very green sort of meadow. So beautiful views. And this is standing back in this corner, looking back towards the door. So a nice sized room. And lastly, for the inside of this part of the house, is the bathroom. So in this bathroom, there's a toilet, basin, and a shower. It's been quite nicely done with these glass bricks. And of course there's a, a nice big window that leads out and looks at a, what looks like a, a lemon tree or an orange tree. It's a nice citrus smell from the blossoms. And here's the shower. It's like one of these big fountain showers. Also has a little handheld unit. And all very neat and tidy and a decent enough size room for everything that's going on in here. All right, so now let's walk our way back. So again, we're inside now, we're looking back towards the, um, the kitchen area, going back through the lounge. And now we're gonna have a look. We're gonna have a look at the storage area. So this is where they said that there could potentially be a third bedroom. Uh, in order to access it, obviously you have to come outside here, but this here is a storage room. It's being used for deep freezers and fridges and almost like a pantry storage um, and a washing machine. But it's a decent size, nice tall ceilings and space. I mean, look at all these appliances that they've managed to cram in here. I wouldn't say cram, they've got lots of room around them as well. And double glazing on the windows, also shutters. So this could make a decent sized bedroom. All right, and then it carries on. So now we've got a little walkway that goes upstairs. And this is an absolutely beautiful room. Have a look at this. So you can see there's a, 
a lovely sunny room here. Now the owner was saying that in winter this room is fantastic because uh, you know when it's cold in the winter you can sit down on one of these beautiful sofas and you can look out over the view. Obviously you wouldn't have the shading here but you've got the views of the forest. You've got the views of the countryside on the side here and on a day like today when it's hot you can open up the windows and have the fly screen there. Uh, not that I've actually seen very many flies here. So yeah, a lovely space up here. And, and then this takes you through to the upstairs annex. They've got skylights in the roof. Now I will mention that the roof up here, um, I can walk in the center of the roof and I've got almost an arm's length worth of space. But as I walk towards the sides here, my head, I'll have to start to duck down a little bit. So that is worth pointing out. But obviously we are upstairs in the rafters, but on the, you know, on the middle of it, there's plenty of room. So lovely space. And so walking through here, this is where they've set up a bed. And a lovely little window over there. So you can look out over the views. Double glazed. Look at that. Stunning. And then there's a bathroom. Let's put some of those lights on. Although I think that's going to be flickery on the camera. So let's turn those lights off. So now this bathroom has a toilet, basin, and a mini sized bathtub. It's big enough for you to sit in with your knees up and a cute little window, also with a shutter. So a really lovely little flat up here, a very cozy space um, and quite big actually. I'd say cozy because the roof in some parts are a bit lower. But yeah, a really comfortable, comfortable space and then it has this really sunny area that you can sit and enjoy the, the light. All right, so yeah, a lovely area that. Let's close this all up. And now we're going to work our way down and into the main gardens. Now we walk out from the front door and this is the entrance where we came in. Uh, I just might add that all of this going all the way up to that forest there is still part of the property. It extends all the way up there. So now this is the main garden section and it's all been fenced off. Um, we've got a magnificent magnolia tree here and then we've got an absolutely fantastic fig tree. Look at this. So huge figs, an absolutely massive tree. Um, I mean, look at this thing. I'm really in love with this tree. <laughs> Magnificent. We have a camellia tree over there and huge oaks. Look at these. Well, not oaks, sorry. Uh, huge olive trees. And they've been beautifully shaped and pruned as well. So they don't get too high and they're spread out. And they're also nice and open so that, you know, so that a breeze can get through. So yeah, this is just looking back at that veranda area on the house looking back at the front door of the house and how it extends into this beautiful green garden that's all nice and shaded and we have a wood store just over here uh, it's quite nice and rustic looking I think it's been built out of pallets and different pieces of wood but it gives a lovely farmy feel about it now I do want to point out there is irrigation up here so this is irrigation um, this is using the house's water and to speak about the house's water uh, up on about 100 meters up there I believe, I think it was about 100 meters or 50 meters, there is a borehole and that borehole basically supplies the main house with drinking water and that water tastes fantastic and uh, so they've got the option of using that water through these host pipes to also irrigate this whole garden section uh, and they've got host pipes dotted all the way from here all the way through the terraces down there or all, sorry all along this terrace in that direction through the vegetable garden and everything. Now on a lower terrace, which is just down here, they have an irrigation system and that comes from a well. And so you have the option of using the borehole water 
and you also have the option of using the well water. So there's plenty of water on the farm. Now, this, look at this, a beautiful, what she calls a larpa, which in South Africa is pretty much this. I would call this, well, let's say a pool house. And as you can see, look, it's got some chimneys. So this, I'll show you what this is when we get inside. And look, there's another chimney there. Now this pool house has double glazing. It's uh, built out of brick, but it's got glass walls the whole way around. And this is a bread oven, Portuguese bread oven, or you can use it for pizzas, for baking, all sorts of stuff. And then on this side, we have a beautiful open fireplace. And all the smoke goes outside the room. So you can be in here even in winter and you can have what us South Africans like to call a braai or you could call a barbecue. And yeah, absolutely beautiful. I mean, look at this unit. So much storage space and everything. And then another amazing thing about it is it's got shutters the whole way across. So you can bring all the shutters down. Um, the only side that doesn't have shutters is on this side. But this side does not get sun. So it's got shutters wherever the sun will, uh, will be. And it has two doors. It has one door on this side. We have a door on this side so you can have a nice flow through. Uh, another nice thing about it is all of the windows slide. So they're sliding windows. You, you can open them all up and you can have a beautiful breeze going through. The, these units here all cascade down and open. Cascade down and open. So you've got a nice big wide open section. And yeah, I'm very envious of this, of this pool house. This is lovely. A beautiful, beautiful building. Great. Let's, let's venture on because there's so much more to see. So I'll close this door behind me. And this is the main entrance to the house. The beautiful fig tree. Beautiful loquat tree up here. And then she has some amazing roses here. Now she's sad that the roses have all just finished. So um, apparently they were looking amazing. She's got some lilies coming up here. Look at that. All these beautiful roses. And uh, this looks like an orange. Yes, it is orange. There's lots of trees there. We've got um, olives dotted all over the place. So you can see all these olive trees and they've been here for a while by the looks of it. Ah, and then over here, before I forget, a swimming pool. So that's beautiful. Now the swimming pool I believe is um, about five meters by, I think she said three meters. Five by, by three, so a decent enough size. Uh, it looks like it has a nice shallow section and then drops off into a much deeper bit. It's got a top skimmer and the pool pump is all in this corner. And then also speaking about dimensions, this pool house is about five meters by five meters. I'm just going on approximate dimensions here. And then just around the side, she's got a nice seating area for after you've made your barbecue or you've baked some stuff. You can sit outside, you can eat some food you can come down to the pool, you can put your sun lounges underneath the shade of these olive trees and you can cool off in this water. Bliss. Okay, so now the property extends off in this direction and we're going to go through this rustic gate over here and we're going to go into the vegetable garden. Let me just close this behind me. So you can see she's got, she's planted all of these from slips. So she bought this property seven years ago and all of this was just grown from little slips and it's made a beautiful hedge going all the way down. And there's just numerous fruit trees, uh, rose bushes, olives, herbs. She's just got amazing stuff in here. Um, peach trees, more peach trees. Now she's, she planted everything here apart from the olive trees. So all of these, these big sort of um, coniferous plants here and these, these big fan palms and stuff, she's planted all of these and they've grown from small plants into these big ones. And another thing that you'll notice is the ground is covered in clover and it's basically regenerating their soil here and putting nitrogen back in. So you've got very, very fertile soil. So let's go into the main uh, vegetable garden area and have a look. Let me just close this up behind me. Excellent. 
So again, lots of clover all over the ground, lots of herbs. Um, we've, we've even got something here which is Cape Gooseberry, which is quite nice in desserts and things. And you can see all of the different herbs, oregano. And over here we have a greenhouse for seedlings and things like that. And as you can see, it's been covered with quite a lot of shade because as you can imagine, the sun here gets quite extreme. And again, uh, this one over here is a tool shed. So it's got all your potting tools and everything you need to run the vegetable garden. So I just want to point out these, um, these black pipes over here. This is the irrigation system running from the borehole. So this is the house water and it dots all the way through here. You can see there's a hose pipe there that, that connects to it. Um, but again, you can, also, well, you can also get water from the well, which is in this bottom terrace. So you've got a choice of two different options. Now she's made raised beds out of uh, these building bricks. You can see she's got things like fennel, strawberries. Um, there's all sorts of things growing here, raspberries. So, so much going on. And over here, this is a polovnia. Polovnia, which is um, a plant that grows with beautiful, beautiful blue or purple sort of flowers. And it uh, looks absolutely incredible in the spring. And she's got a whole bunch of them popping up. I mean, this is a huge one over here. And they grow very fast. Um, just fruit trees dotted all over the place. I'm not sure exactly what one this is. I think it might be an apple. There's uh, some big apples over here, some pears. We've got some more pears over here. And uh, again, just all of these raised beds and they're all looking really good. Courgettes. Look at these apples. So a food forest. <laughs> now, if you look over here, there's beautiful willow trees and she grew these from slips. And there's a whole bunch of them dotted all throughout the property. There's another one just through here. There's another one down here on this terrace. But we'll get to that in a bit. So let's carry on through this, this vegetable garden. Now we've got things like cabbages growing here. You can see there's some more cabbages over there. Um, so if you are green fingered and you enjoy growing your own food, this is ideal. And just look at the shade that this gives you. You know, today is 30 degrees, well, it's going up to 30 degrees, and this is very welcome to have all of this shade. Okay, so we have a bit of a compost bin over here, and now we have some of the other irrigation system that's on these big sprinklers. So this is the irrigation that comes from the well in this bottom field, and there's a couple of these dotted all throughout this area that you can turn them on and you can basically water this whole section without using the house water. Um, and all of the pipes extend throughout here and so you have the option of using either or. And through here is a lovely section of clover. And we've got some raspberries over there, a little bit of shade from the uh, the olive trees. So this is going to be an excellent part for you to put some veggies down straight into the ground. Now what we're going to do is just quickly have a look through this section. This runs parallel to the veggie garden that we've just been through uh, and it also has a whole bunch of different things. So we've got some peaches, apricots. So these here are apricots. Lots of different apricot trees all spreaded throughout. Have a look at this one. It's just full and they're looking quite good. Um, and this extends all the way down here. We've got a moringa, which is like a strawberry fruit, and they make some kind of a liqueur from that. And, and this extends all the way down here into the chicken house. But before we get in there, I just want to show you how this also just runs parallel to the veg garden that, that we were with, and runs all the way back to the house. So. Let's quickly go and have a look at the chickens. And uh, it's a beautiful chicken enclosure. So let me open this up quick. Okay. 
Now I've been keeping chickens for about one and a half years and they're very destructive creatures. They rip everything up, but this is looking great. Look, it's still very green. Uh, she says that she's been planting things here that the chickens don't like. So she says, if you plant things that are very strongly scented, um, like celery, I think, she, I believe she said celery and something else. I think she said oregano, then they don't, um, well, then they don't fuss with it. So there's a little pond over there. Um, she hasn't, she hasn't filled it yet because she said that she needs to clean it first and she's going to fill it. And then we've got some of the chicken buildings. So there's one over here for them to sleep in, another one over there. Um, and you can see they've got plenty of space. She's got five chickens in here and they give her enough eggs. Look how healthy they are, beautiful colors. So that's the chicken house. Um, again, a nice big olive, um, loads of olives all throughout the property and just covered in blossom, look at that. So there's going to be loads of olives all over these. And then this is the chicken house. And you can see just down here, there's a whole stack of eggs. And another one just up there. So happy chickens, very happy chickens. And this chicken house extends even further into another section. Um, this on the left hand side, we will get to that in a moment, uh, but this is all part of the terrace where we are now with the chickens. Uh, there's another little pond over here that needs cleaning. Uh, another little building over there that's actually for storing straw, but apparently the chickens like to lay in there. And then another huge, huge olive tree. And this over here is the back of the barn, which is a two bedroom, two bathroom barn. And we will be getting to that in a moment. So let's work our way back around again. Now what we're going to do is try and keep this in a, in a nice flow. The quickest way for us to get to the barn is to go along this road, of course. Um, but I'm going to take us on a different route so we can see this bottom terrace first and work our way back up. You can see how green and lush everything is. She irrigates, puts down lots of water uh, the whole year round, or at least in the summer. And uh, she's never run out of water. She's never had any problems with, you know, with water. There's lots of water on the property. And that's a very serious consideration here in Portugal is to make sure that you have enough water. Um, she's been here for seven years, never had a problem. And you can see she irrigates a lot to keep this all nice and green. So this is um, how you get down to this bottom terrace. And uh, let's go and have a look. I'm closing all these gates behind me because I'm not sure which animals can be running around and where they're allowed to go. <laughs> okay, so this whole bottom terrace is hers. And uh, there's a water storage tank, a big old well, and in that direction, there's a stream that borders the whole property. So let's go down and have a look. This is a concrete and brick water storage tank. And it was built before she bought the property. And I think she said before they had the well. And so they used to collect water inside here. And this used to irrigate the field. So it's not actually used anymore. I believe she was saying that this pipe over here is the backwash from the swimming pool. And it just backwashes in here. Obviously all of the chlorine oxidizes. And so it becomes inert and uh, the water will be nice and clean and clear. Um, oh, up here on the mountain is a mobile mast, so you get nice 4G reception here. But let me step down into this field and give you an idea of what's going on. So I'm going to walk into this very corner, and the reason for that is this is the boundary line. So where the grass gets long, that's pretty much the boundary line, and it runs all the way down to where the corner is where the river is, or at least the stream. Uh, so it goes up to here, the boundary. It steps up onto this terrace and then goes into the vegetable garden and all the way back, uh, back to where the house is. So the boundary of the line or the boundary is where the house is, out to here, all the way up here, down and to this line. It runs in a straight line and goes all the way down to the river. 
Uh, so let's have a look at this irrigation at this irrigation well. There's a pump house on the back. It's all got electrics, and so you can turn it on and off from up from up top, you know, without coming down. And listen to that. So lots of frogs. Now the frogs are a really good indicator of how clean and pure the water is. There's even a little snake on this little pipe here. I don't know if this camera is going to pick him up. I'll try and zoom in, but there's a little snake. Now you don't have to worry, these snakes or these water snakes are completely uh, non-venomous. They will not interfere with you at all. They're very, very, very safe. Um, but yeah, this is a big irrigation well. You, you can see how much groundwater is just constantly pouring into it. You're not going to run out of water. Uh, it's about seven meters deep, the owner uh, was saying. And yeah, basically has a pump from here all the way back up to the top terraces, can water everything up there. Uh, you can see all of the pipes here going throughout the entire property, all throughout this orchard here. So you can put water absolutely everywhere on this property. And now we have a whole bunch of pears, apples, uh, peaches, um, looks like more apricots, uh, plums. Actually, these are plums, not apricots. So lots of different varieties of plums. And uh, I believe she was even saying that there's Back in that corner there, Granny Smith apples. So let me hug this boundary so that we can see where we are. So um, back in that direction, that's the house. As I said, the border goes up there, down there and across. And that's the boundary line. So let's get back onto that boundary line and then you can at least have some kind of an indication of how big the land is. So 3.2 hectares. So where the tall grass is now, we're walking along this boundary line. And this over here is a wooden bridge. A little bit rickety, um, but this basically, this is where your border is now. So you've got this, this stream running all the way along the side border. Let's look back over this field, the well. Um, you've got your top terrace up there. You've got the barn building there. The boundary running there to where it steps up onto this terrace back onto the house, which is behind this tree over here. And then it extends all the way up into that forest over there and you've got 3.2 hectares. So a nice big space. All right, so um, the stream is not that accessible from here, or at least you're not gonna see much from this side. A little bit overgrown at the moment. So I'm gonna head on down in this direction so you can see some of the water. Lovely pears over here. You've just got so much fruit growing on this farm. Fruits, berries, nuts, uh, tons of stuff. This is where this little stream is. Now it's very overgrown here, so I'm gonna try and see if I can find a way in. It wouldn't take long to get a strimmer to go through here. Uh, but you can see that this, this river is bordered by a beautiful old stone wall and Lovely oaks, I mean, look at this beautiful oak leaf. Lots of little oaks coming up here. A lovely stone bridge going over a peaceful little stream. I don't know if you can see the water just spilling off. So this stream basically denotes one of the boundaries and runs all the way through and all the way down. And now we're gonna head on back up so the stream is one of the boundaries and where you see the, the grass here, so you've got the tall grass, or well, actually a little bit further in, probably a little bit further in, I'm not sure exactly, but kind of in line with these going in that, in that direction and down here to where the bridge is, this is the border line. So it's like that. And when we look in this direction, it follows that terrace around there and like a sort of little square area here. And obviously the main house is up there. And uh, yeah, so there's a little bit of a change in the borderline here. And we're gonna walk along it. And in this direction up on the top there is where the chicken house was. And this over here used to be a goose, a goose and duck sort of enclosure. So it's all fenced off. I forgot to mention that 
that the chicken house is all fully fenced off and fox proof. Um, this is all, all of the stuff's been dug in. Uh, at the moment we've got some really big chickens living in here. And this is like a duck pond. Um, but at the moment it's looking a bit, um, a little bit overgrown with, with weeds and stuff. But I'm sure it could be cleaned up nicely. Um, and so yeah, another nice enclosure. So you can have like ducks and geese over here. You can have chickens up there. So let's just reorientate ourselves. We've got the river running along here. The border comes up in this direction and then it heads off in this direction where you can see this row of sort of vines. So this is all part of the land now that we're walking on still. And lots and lots of grass. So the border comes all the way down into this corner and then it juts up. It's pretty much where you can see all of the growth. That's the border. So where the grass is lower belongs and where it's not is, uh, well, the neighbor's land. So let me just look up here quickly. We've got um, this lovely sort of terraced area here going into where the ducks are and then it steps up and now we have the barn building which we're going to go and have a look at. Um, but before we get there I want to walk to the to the very bottom corner uh, boundary so we can have a look. Now there is a um, portable swimming pool here I believe this belongs to her friends who are currently staying in the um, in this uh, barn. So she has some fr friends of hers who are a family and they're currently living in there. Um, but whoever bought the, this property could potentially rent that barn out to, you know, to people or they could also use it for friends and family to come and stay. Now I believe the, the border boundary is to where these trees are. And then it goes up in a straight line all the way up. And to give you an idea of what that means, we've just walked in a straight line, we've turned down there, you get to the river, you go there, you've got the wells, you step up, you've got um, the barn just over here, you've got the, the chickens, you've got the vegetable gardens, then you've got uh, the main garden of the house and the swing pool, the larpo, then the main house, and then it extends all the way up. You've got vineyards, you've got a huge forest, I mean look at all these pines. So let's head up in that direction and have a look at what's going on. Now we're working our way up to where the barn is and unfortunately I don't have access to the barn at the moment um, but essentially the way that it's built is uh, as you can see on the outside it's, it's wood. I'm not sure um, whether or not it's insulated but it does seem to have like a new roof on it. It's also got um, a nice wood burning stove I've been told and this is the flue for it and all of the windows have double glazing. They've got wooden shutters and they slide open and Essentially, um, when you go inside the building, there's a kitchen uh, that has a little dining section and then it goes into a lounge area where the wood burner is. On the other side of the lounge is a single bedroom, so it's quite a small room. And then through in this direction, there is um, a big double bedroom that has a big bathroom. Uh, and then I believe there's another bathroom, I think it might be on this side. So there's two bathrooms, there's two bedrooms. Uh, one of the bedrooms being very small and the other one being a, a decent, generous size. Um, and outside there's a lovely area, so you've got a cork oak out here, beautiful big rock, uh, and you know, just look at these wild foresty type garden areas. So very nice and relaxing, lots of shade, and it's been fenced off here, so there's like a little porch area. And this is the doggy that comes, well, that doesn't come with the property, this is uh, the friends who are staying here, this is their dog. Unfortunately the friends aren't here at the moment and they have the keys with them so I can't get inside. But uh, yeah we have this little overhanging section and um, as you can see there's the front door, the entrance and it goes around into like a little sort of garden area. Another one of those polovnia trees in the background, some roses. And let's go out and around, there's some storage areas here, like little workshop storage areas. Ah, before I do that, look up there. Lovely little hammock, nice little seat. Very, very, very cute. Now that up there is the vineyard. So the vineyard stretches all the way back from where the house is, all the way through to here, and then goes up another terrace, I believe. So this over here is like a little outdoor kitchen area. 
this is a workshop where they've um, been building some stuff. So they're actually building some beautiful beds. Look at this, it's absolutely stunning. And then there's a workshop here with tools and a storage room just in here. So, nice amount of space, two bedroom cottage and a lovely outdoor area. Really nice. Now, if you look back in this direction, this is the road that um, runs parallel to where the vegetable gardens are. This is the chicken house over here and it runs all the way back to where the house is. So you've got this beautiful road and you've got all these wildflowers. Uh, I believe she's planted cherry trees and there's oak trees and all sorts of stuff that, that are growing on this big embankment. And just above the embankment here is the vineyard. So what I'm going to do is, this road's looking a bit steep. I haven't actually been up here yet. So we're going to go in this direction. This is all new to me now. So let's go and check it out. All right, so this is part of the vineyard. Um, so as you can see, we've got the vineyard. They're all trellised. So they're actually going along the trellises. It helps to keep some of the vines off the ground. And uh, there's quite a wide space here. You could definitely fit a tractor down here if you needed to. I'm not sure how the tractor would get to the, the next one and so on, but down this one you could get a tractor. Uh, let, let's go around the outskirts. So this here looks like a little vegetable garden. We've got some lettuces, some cabbages. I think this would probably be the veggie garden that goes with whoever's staying in the barn. So if you've got friends and stuff there, they've got access to some fresh food. And now we go in this direction. So this is the last little bit of the vineyard. We're going to get another look at the vineyard from where the house is. So it extends for a long, a long time. She was saying that she got 350 liters of wine. It's definitely a year's supply of wine if you have a bottle a day or just over a bottle a day. Uh, so here's the forest. Now, um, when we were back in this corner from before where the barn is, the sort of boundary line runs up here. I'm not sure exactly where the boundary line is, but I'm assuming that it's pretty much in this direction going all the way up to the top of the hill. And all of this forest is now going to be part of the property. So you're just not going to run out of wood, out of firewood. You know, you've got as much as you can use, really. Let's have a look up here. This is quite steep. And this is now going to take us into the forest. I haven't actually walked in here yet, so this is all going to be new to me. So let's just try and find our, our best way through it. Okay, so there's a little path over here. I'm just going to follow this path, get the stick out of my shoe. <laughs> so yeah, plenty of pine cones. Uh, we've got cork oak trees, we've got regular oak trees. We've got coniferous trees like pine trees. We've got some ferns. This is a gorgeous forest. So I don't feel like I'm on an actual track here. Um, this is more like some kind of a break in the woods. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get to one of the dirt tracks and I'm going to walk it in that direction. So bear with me for a while while we get onto one of the main tracks and then you can see the forest properly. So I'm just walking past where the barn is and the storage rooms and on the side over here we've got where all the chickens are and I just wanted to show you this little road uh, that leads back to the house. So you can see the chickens and the vegetable garden, and the fruit trees and now we're heading on back to the house. Uh, I just wanted to show you this little section because it's a beautiful little road. It's also very well kept obviously not very much traffic going up and down so and look at this beautiful big old oak tree over here so she's saying that she's planted up this bank so that you know there, there's no erosion or anything because she's got lots of things holding it all together lots of wildflowers and things um, and now we look back at the house and you can see here we've got the swimming pool from this view the larpa or pool house, uh, back into the gardens, the beautiful big fig tree. Hello. 
Hi. <laughs> and now we're back at the front of the property. So what we're going to do now is head on up in this direction. Now I want to show you where the other border of the property is. So all of the forest, everything that we've looked at in this direction is all part of the property, extending down to that bottom terrace where the well is and the river, all the way down the bottom of the road to where we get the, um, you know, the barn, the wooden building, all the way up on here to where the vines are and that forest, this is all part of the property. On this side of the road, this is not part of the property. So I believe that the border is here. It's about a meter or a meter and a bit just away from the back of the building. So from here down in a straight line is not part of the property and all the way up on this side of the road. So everything on this side. Let's head up this road quickly and have a look at, um, at this forest. And as we go up, you can see the vineyard. Now the owner was saying that she is getting the vineyard um, tidied. She's getting it all strimmed and everything, but it hasn't been completed yet. So she didn't want to put off the filming. Um, she just wanted to film, but obviously you can imagine if these are all pruned nicely and they're um, you know, stuck along the trellises and all of the grass is cut, it's going to be a stunning vineyard. And there's another terrace up here with some more vines. So lots and lots of grapes. Uh, it's also fully irrigated. You can see there's irrigation pipes. So, you know, you're going to get really nice juicy grapes. Um, and plenty of water on the property. And now we look back towards the house from up on the top here. And then the mountains in the background. This is all the neighboring land. Um, and yeah. This over here is the main driveway, obviously. When you want to drive with a regular car, this is the way that you should go. The, the, you know, this road's in really good condition. This one over here, the gradient is quite steep. And uh, I think a regular car is going to struggle a bit. Uh, when we first arrived on the property, we took our Golf down here. And it wasn't great. For a 4x4 or a 2x4, it'll be fine. But a regular car is not so great. This access, though, is perfect. Uh, well, actually, I wouldn't say perfect, you know, there's a few little bumps and things, but it's, it's very good. So now we're heading up along what is kind of the driveway into this forest. Now, this is something I wish I had on my property, is a forest. You can see they've been doing some felling, they've got tons of firewood here. And this forest has got cork oaks throughout, pines, there's all sorts of varieties growing in here. So the forest, you know, if this is the house in the background, the property extends all the way to there, you can imagine all of this forest is part of the property, and all of this side. So lovely, private feeling, uh, beautiful sounds of nature and birds. Lovely little flowers and everything popping up all over the place. Pine cones, pine needles, beautiful smells. Look at these. Beautiful. So I'm going to walk all the way up to the very top of the property. So. Part of this is part of the, the property heading all the way back in that direction, going all the way back down to where the barn is. So you've got lots of forest, lots of firewood, lots of building wood as well, if you wanted to build stuff out of pine. So we're going to walk for a little bit. I think it's going to go around the corner. As you can imagine, there's still more forest on this side. Beautiful big granite rocks. You know, the house is far down in that direction now. Um, so, a big piece of land, you know, our farm is three and a half hectares, this is 3.2, but this feels immensely bigger, probably because of all of the terraces and the climbing and, yeah, it's beautiful. The amount of vegetation and wildlife and, you know, just everything going on here is absolutely stunning. Look at these, lavender, 
Got some fox gloves. I recently found out that these are very toxic, but only if you eat them. So you can see the general condition of this road. It's pretty decent. You know, we're getting regular cars down here, no problem. So we're going to walk into the very corner and the very corner is where the two roads split off. So there's that one steep driveway um, and that basically joins up with, with this road. And where that is, is pretty much where the boundary is. So I believe it's coming up soon. And here it is just in front of us. We have the second driveway. So. That's the entrance. Uh, the owner was saying that there's a, some kind of a marker here. I'm not sure. Perhaps she meant this rock. I'm not sure exactly, so don't quote me on it. But this is the entrance to the property. This is the driveway that we've just, uh, that we drove along to get here. So this is the corner. The property extends in that direction, goes back down to where the barn is, almost like a rectangle possibly a little bit round, I'm not sure exactly, uh, goes down this driveway, heads on down to the house, and you know, this is roughly the shape. 3.2 hectares. So you can see this is a lot more than first meets the eye when you arrive here. Uh, it's not just a two bedroom place, or a two slash three bedroom, there's plenty of living space. And also, this is a perfect property for someone that wants to grow their own food. It's got established, mature, uh, fruit and vegetable gardens. Uh, there's plenty of space for animals. There's plenty of space for planting extra crops. There's an abundance of water. Uh, you, you are in incredible peaceful surroundings, but you also, you have internet, you have mains electricity, you have abundant water. Um, so these are all things to take into account. Now, you know, the asking price is 270,000. And I believe it's fair for a property of this size and for everything that is on offer with this place. Obviously, we've noticed prices in Portugal are steadily going up. Uh, there's an influx of people due to Brexit, uh, due to the coronavirus lockdowns that are trying to leave cities and they want to start living a more natural life, start growing their own food, uh, be more off the grid and not have to rely on municipal water or electricity and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, a property like this is ideal for getting away, um, but without sacrificing too many of your comforts and mod cons. Uh, do I like it? I most certainly do. I love the forest. I absolutely love the forest. I love that larpa. I love the pool. Um, you know, the, the, like the house is fantastic, especially that um, second room upstairs and uh, or the annex upstairs. And yeah, all in all, it's a great property. I'm really glad that I had a chance to look. Uh, it's an incredibly hot day today. You can probably see I'm starting to, I'm starting to, uh, sweat a little bit but it's been a really good experience i hope that you've enjoyed watching this video uh, if you have any questions about this property please have a look in the description just below this video i'm going to put all the contact details of the person who's selling this, this property you can inquire with them i really hope that you found this virtual tour uh, useful and uh, yeah please don't forget to comment uh, give a thumbs up on the video and uh, we'll see you next time ciao